Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. You have tuned in to New Mexico Economic Development Department's COVID-19 response webinar series. Today we are going to have a discussion on updates to the federal lending programs. Before we get started, I wanted to share a few details. We are recording this session, so the live recording will be available on YouTube. We will send that link out to your email. We have all the registrants' emails, so we will send out the link and we will send out the presentation in a PDF form. Please, as we go along, type in any questions that you have and we will do our best to get to those. We also have your questions that you submitted at uh, registration. I'd like to introduce the Cabinet Secretary for the New Mexico Economic Development Department, Alicia Keyes. Thanks, Joanna, and thanks for everyone um, for joining in today. Uh, we have a great presentation from the SBA coming up, um, so I won't spend that much time um, talking through um, those programs, but they are some of the best that we have out there, and there will be additional funding coming through, as the SBA will point out. Um, so I definitely urge all of our companies, all the people listening, to apply for those programs um, as they are going to be first come, first serve. We do have two state programs, and on your screen you'll see the first one is the COVID-19 Business Loan Guarantee Program. And um, so far we've helped, I think, almost 40, over 40 businesses now with this program. And the state acts as the guarantor um, for a loan up to 80% of principal or a maximum of $50,000. So um, in this program, you work with your lender um, and then um, they will contact uh, people at the Economic Development Department. The second program we have is the LIDA Zero Interest Loan Program. This is a little, um, this is a little bit more restrictive, just because statutorily um, you have to, uh, you, it has to be for manufacturing or um, with retailers um, with a population of less than fifteen thousand. Um, and this loan is also limited to expenditures for land and building and infrastructure. But if you are a manufacturer, if you if you do um, think that you might be able to use this, please reach out to us. Um, Joanna is going to put all of our emails and our contact information also um, at the end of this presentation. Uh, we also wanted to just bring your attention to a website that we put together called Buy for Tomorrow Today. And the actual website is buynmlocal.com. And um, we came up with this, with this idea because there are so many people that are at home right now wanting to help small businesses and either by purchasing product that can be shipped to them or by purchasing gift certificates that can be used um, once the stay at home order is lifted by the governor. So if you are a small business, um, you can register your company and um, we put a link to your website. We also have numerous webinars about how to do PayPal accounts and also how to market your company. Um, so definitely check those out online and we're gonna have actually a webinar a week. I think we're on our 12th webinar right now. Um, our next webinar is April 30th at 2.15. And this is repositioning your economic development organization. So please go onto our website, um, which is gonm.biz, and um, we have all that information um, for you. Uh, go ahead and go on to the next slide, Joanna. So this is just a handy slide to please, um, just to remind us that we all need to fill out our census. Um, it's super important for everybody in New Mexico to be counted. Um, so please do that, and I'm going to hand it back over to Joanna. Great. Thank you, Secretary Keyes. And as Secretary Keyes mentioned, here are the contacts for the department. You can find the website. You can also find your regional rep, and here is the YouTube channel that you can access all of the previous webinars on. I'd like to introduce Ivan Corrales the Deputy Direct, District Director for the Small Business Administration. Ivan? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, 
thank you all for joining us today. As you know, the Small Business Administration has been very engaged in what's going on with getting loans out and getting um, actually grants is when you think about it through our PPP program, our Paycheck Protection Program. Um, in the last 14 days, we've done Paycheck Protection loans that equaled 14 years worth of loans for the SBA. So 1.6 million small businesses in all 50 states and territories benefited from it. And 5,000 lenders participated in this program. So it was a massive undertaking and thank God we had our lenders that, that in, in the short term took a risk uploading these documents without true guidance. So thank you all. If you're a lender out there, we really, really appreciate you. Uh, the massive majority of these loans were, uh, 75, 74% of them were under $150,000. Uh, so we did see all the, the negative press with those $10 million loans. But when you look at it, 74% of all the loans were under 150. So we were actually targeting and we did meet that goal of helping the true small business, the micro business and those sole props out there. Um, with the new legislation, we have 310 billion increase for the Paycheck Protection Program. The set aside amounts are 30 billion for loans made by insured uh, depository institutions and credit unions that have assets between 10 billion and 50 billion. And then 30 billion of the loans are going to be targeted by uh, community financial institutions, small insured uh, depository institutions and credit unions with assets less than 10 billion. So they are targeting our, our rural small lenders which in turn will be able to loan some of these funds to our, our micro businesses and our rural businesses out there. Um, there's no changes to the eligibility for the PPP for the uh, C-6, the nonprofit. We didn't get anything yet. So just keep it in mind. Uh, there is a $10 billion increase for the EIDL grants an additional 50 billion to support the EIDL, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, what's going to happen is they're going to figure out how much they have in the queue. And if there's additional funds after they figure out how much they already have committed, they will reopen the EIDL um, application site at sba.gov. Um, both programs are there. Currently, they have not been open because we have not got the okay yet, and it will open as soon as we get uh, the funding and everything set up. And it's looking like it'll probably be Monday before they open up. That's the last word we've got. Now, if we unofficially, so so we're we're not sure yet what day it's going to open, but today or Monday, as as far as we know. Uh, the other parts of the of the new act give 75 billion to help hospitals and healthcare, and 25 billion for testing for COVID-19. So this package is definitely going to help us shore up our economic injury disaster loans, as well as help us reinitiate the Paycheck Protection Program to the tune of 310 billion. For you people or you businesses that are waiting on uh, economic injury disaster loan, um, the process that's going on right now is they are sending out a advance and the advances are calculated by the amount of employees. If you have nine employees, you will get $1,000 for each employee. So you'll get $9,000 if you're a sole prop you'll get 
one thousand dollars. So the un, under the EDIL. So when we're talking about the EDIL, I know a lot of you are anxious to find out if you're going to be funded and when you're going to be funded. Currently, all the applications that were submitted before the funding or the site shut down are being processed. And the first thing that's going to happen is that advance is going to hit your bank account. And then they're going to get a hold of you through email and invite you to come and register at sba.gov to finish the loan process of the EIDL. If you are very anxious and want to call the customer service, disaster customer service assistance number is 800 659 2955. And if you have your your uh, application number, you can send them an email at disaster customer service at sba.gov. And that just ask them what is where am I in the process or whatever. They are processing these applications as fast as they can. Um, like I said, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get the advance, and then later on, you will get the request and the email to fill out the application and continue the application. Um, with me, I have Shally Brown. She's our lender relations specialist, and she works very closely with the banks. And when people call and need something that's specific about the bank or our e-trans system, the system that we upload all our information or all the banks upload their information, she's the one. Um, let me give you my phone number in case I don't get back on. My direct number is 505-248-8227. And we're here in the office and ready to help however we can. Hope you all have a great day. Here's Shelly. Is there slides? No. Oh, there's not? No. Oh, what am I talking about? Just about what the process is for the idea or the PPP. So the PPP program, it is a lender-driven program, so you need to apply with a lender. Um, we don't, the, the loan that we process is, as I just said, the EIDL, the Economic Development, that is a direct loan from SBA. The PPP, the uh, Payroll Protection Program, um, is for used for payroll, 75% payroll and 25% for operating costs. And the lender makes that loan, you apply with the lender, and uh, they input that loan into our system, and then they fund the loan within, they're required to fund it within 10 days. Um, there's some lenders that are doing uh, escrow on it to monitor it, and there's others that will just issue the check. Who those are, I do not know. Um, and I can't recommend because that's a uh, conflict of interest if I do that. But you can always call me and we can talk about uh, maybe what active lenders are. The community banks in our area and credit unions are very interested in doing these loans and they're very active in them. Uh, my phone number is uh, pretty much the same as uh, Ivan, but one number off. It's 505-248-8228. And I'll give you my email address, because sometimes when you're on the computer, it's quicker. And that's Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y dot Brown, B-R-O-W-N, at S-B-A dot G-O-V. So if you have any questions, you can either give me a call or you can email me or, or Ivan, because we're working closely. We uh, monitor our voicemails and try to return phone calls all day long so nothing is um, staying in our voicemail queues. Um, and lenders, if we have lenders on the line, but pretty much lender, I'm on speed dial with lenders, so. But any, uh, welcome, we we'll welcome all your phone calls or, or emails and we'll do whatever we can to assist. I can also look up a loan if you're, if you're a borrower. I can look up the loan and see if it's in our system and where it stands. Um, lenders are trying to put in as much applications as they possibly can and then fund it. So you won't get funded that same day. Um, highly doubtful you'll get funded that same day. Um, but they have 10 days to fund that loan and give you the money. And that's, that's it, unless you have any questions. We're gonna take questions at the end? Okay. I'll be here for questions. Okay, thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Shelly. 
I had a really quick question. Um, I know that there is, is funding to help support the SBA to hire staff. Are you all able to give a timeline on, on when you think you'd be able to bring on additional support to, to help your capacity? Because I know you're, you're all working so hard. So, so we actually have two authorizations. We have a, a front desk person that will be a GS7. And as soon as we find an applicant that wants a temporary one-year uh, appointment, uh, we will submit it and they're going to streamline it and get it through within a couple weeks to a month at the most. So we're hoping within a couple weeks we'll have two additional bodies here helping us with all the things that we're actually doing. Uh, the second position is going to be a GS11 and they're uh, outreach marketing specialists. So they're going to be the, the people that are going to be on these calls and, and doing webinars and and helping us get the information out as we get it. So those are the two positions and we're hoping to fill them rather quickly. That's great. And where should, if, if folks are interested in applying, is there a place that you can direct them? To me. So my email okay. address is Ivan, I-V-A-N dot Corrales, C-O-R-R-A-L-E-S at S-B-A dot gov or they can send it also to our district director john garcia at j o h n dot garcia g a r c i a at s b a dot gov either one of us can can talk to these individuals and see if we can get them on board to help these small businesses you know get through this okay thank you ivan thank you shelly thanks for all the work that you all are doing I did put the numbers that you mentioned, the 1-800 number, as well as um, your emails in the chat box so folks can reference that. Thank you so much. Okay, I'd like to introduce the New Mexico State Small Business Development Center uh, Director, Russell Wyrick. Russell? Hello, yes, uh, my name is Russell Weirich. I'm the Executive State Director of the New Mexico Small Business Development Center Network. If we have my slides, let's go to the first one. All right, so a uh, quick overview. The, the network really consists of a couple of programs. I'm gonna go pretty quickly through, through these. Uh, SBDC, we've got the 19 service centers across the state. Uh, we cover the entire state. And so these are business uh, professionals that are they're, they're available to help you with one-on-one -on -one business counseling. Um, we have our Procurement Technical Assistance Center program. There's six of these across the state. These are the individuals that help our businesses that do government contracting, state, federal, and local, as well as our International Business Accelerator there in Santa Teresa. So we have our team of six uh, business advisors there that help you with importing and exporting and navigating all of that across the world. And we have our Technology Commercialization Accelerator there in Socorro. So this is a new program that will again help you with your patents and technology of getting those to the marketplace. Uh, next slide. So very quickly, um, what we do, no cost one-on-one -on -one business counseling via phone, web, conferencing, or email. We do do it in person. We just don't do it in person right now because again of the, the uh, uh, governor's expectation that we are uh, uh, maintain distance. So uh, we provide one-on-one -on -one counseling. There's no charge for those services. So uh, we're available to help you as you're navigating these challenges these uh, short-term and long-term. And we have our no-cost live webinar trainings on the loan programs uh, and then COVID-19 related uh, small business challenges. We have a lot on there. I'm gonna mention a couple really quickly. We put up a cash flow analysis training uh, and, and it, you know sometimes the, the training and the things we need to know are not what we want to know or popular. It's definitely one I'm gonna recommend that you look into. Uh, I think my small businesses definitely need, you, you gotta understand what you're looking at and how you're gonna survive over the next several months to year and watching your cash to identify if you're gonna get in a spot where you are gonna to have to borrow money at some point. So uh, that, that's training we've got specifically. We've got training on the idle, we've got training on the PPP. We have the New Mexico Disaster Recovery Guide, which is a, I don't know, 80 plus page uh, guide that we developed uh, over the past year and a half. 
that will navigate you through um, uh, any type of a disaster and recovering from that. Um, we've got the state, the COVID-19 business finance resources from the state. We cover all the state programs and what they're doing. We offer these every single day. So there'll, there'll be Saturday classes as well. And then we have an overview of the CARE Act and the New Mexico State. I have a brand new one I'm gonna to talk to you about here in a couple slides in regards to the pandemic unemployment assistance, which is like, gonna be very important for many of our smaller businesses. Let's go to the next slide. I'm gonna move very quickly. All right, the Paycheck Protection Program, most of you know this, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. If they're small businesses, the, the goal is to keep your workers on, the, uh, on payroll. Um, it's available through June 30th, 2020, and it runs through the 7A program. So you're going directly to a lender uh, whenever you're applying for this. So you apply to a lender for this, these PPPs. The uh, SBA is gonna forgive these loans if all your employees are kept on the payroll for eight weeks. You use that money for, uh, and you use it for payroll, rent, mortgage, interest, utilities. And you can go to any of the uh, SBA 7 lenders, uh, federally insured credit unions, community lenders, uh, farm credit system institutions that are participating. Next slide. Okay, who's eligible? Any small business with less than 500 employees, and that includes sole proprietors, independent contractors. And then if you have more than 500 employees, you still might qualify depending on your industry. So you wanna check with the SBA on their size standards for your specific industry, because it may be a little bit different depending on the industry that you're in. Uh, let's go to the next slide. All right, so this loan will be fully forgiven if you use the funds for payroll cost, interest, mortgage, rent, utilities, uh, but 75% of that has to be used on the payroll. Uh, they're gonna defer those payments for six months. There's no collateral or personal guarantees required for it and you're not gonna get charged any fees. The SBA is picking those up on the back end. So the SBA is covering that, uh, the fees, so that you as a, the borrower is not gonna have to incur those fees. Uh, and then the forgiveness is based on the employer maintaining and uh, quickly rehiring those employees. It'll be reduced if your full-time headcount declines or if your salaries and wages decrease. So before you take these, you need to do some thinking and really analyze very carefully are you gonna be able to accomplish that? We are already hearing from small businesses with a concern in regards to unemployment. They'll call their employees excited, they are ready to bring them all back with this and their employees are, are mad at them because they like, whoa, I'm on unemployment. I, I don't wanna come back. So just be prepared if you're pursuing this, make sure you've had some thought and discussion. Are you gonna be able to get your head count back up and make sure those salaries and wages are at the levels they were prior to this emergency so that the loan forgiveness isn't impacted. It's a two year, the maturity is uh, two years and interest rate of 1%. Next slide. Again, most of you know it, but there's some new, all right. So the amendment, they amended the CARES Act. The president signed it today. They added $310 billion to that PPP. 60 billion of that they set aside for small, smaller lenders. 30 billion of that went to institutions with assets of between 10 billion, but less than 50 billion. And then they set aside 30 billion of that for institutions with less than 10 billion. And this was again specifically to try to get that money out to some of, uh, you know, maybe the rural areas or, or other uh, places that it, it don't sometimes, uh, you know, didn't have as much involvement. So there's a breakdown there. Next slide. All right, let's talk about the idle. There was one change on the idle, and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, this is any business with 500 employees or less. Um, if you have, again, if you have more than 500 employees, talk with the SBA about their size standards to, to, to check out your specific business. This CARES Act amended, amendment did amend section 110A2. They added the statement, and I know there's a misspelling here, my apology, uh, agricultural enterprises. So originally when they did the idle, they did not include the, the eligibility for agriculture enterprises in that CARES Act. Well, they have amended it. So in the this amendment, they did add that section uh, for the idle. So if you did try to apply for the idle and you ran into some barriers, keep your eyes open. If they do open that portal back up again, um, it, it, uh, according to, again, the amendment, I'm just telling you what's in the bill. I don't know the regulation here, but it is in the amendment to the CARES Act bill that agricultural enterprises uh, with uh, not more than 500 employees are, are eligible for the idle now. Next slide. Okay, the uh, idle, of course, you can get up to $10,000 advance. The way the uh, SBA did that previously was they, they did a calculation based on 1,000 per employee. 
Uh, all I can tell you for some of my sole proprietors or individuals when you're filling that out, we got some mixed uh, experiences. I had some people that when asked how many employees they had, they put in zero because they didn't count themselves and uh, they didn't get an advance. I have others that put down one because they counted themselves and they did get an advance. So you just need to read the documentation carefully when you're filling it out. Make sure you get your employee number accurate whenever you feel like that's the best I can state it. Make sure you get it accurately completed if they open that portal back up and you can get in and apply for your idle. okay? Everyone's eligible. That advance is not gonna have to be repaid, uh, whatever it is. And then the payments, if you go on and get the loan, the payments are deferred for 12 months. Uh, next slide. All right, so those idols can be used for working, working capital, fixed debt, payroll, accounts payable, bills that otherwise couldn't have been paid for the uh, disaster, uh, if the disaster had occurred. And again, this is not really for profit or expansion, not the design of this, uh, the idle loan. Next, next slide. Okay. You can qualify for up to 2 million. The interest rates on the idle are 3.75% for small businesses, 2.75% for nonprofits, uh, and repayment terms up to 30 years. And then the payment uh, payments can be deferred for the first, uh, they are deferred for the first 12 months. Next slide. All right, this is a big one. I threw this in here, even though that's not the topic, but I think this is so. This is the next wave. Uh, we, we, we are on the ground, Floor, you know, we're on the ground at the New Mexico SBDC. So we deal with these people one-on-one -on -one and, and we're getting the heartbreaking stories. The bulk of these heartbreaking stories we're getting are at this smaller level. And these individuals that are so small, they're kind of falling through the cracks. They applied for the idol. They either didn't, didn't get it or they didn't hear, they haven't heard back yet, et cetera. Um, or or they're P, the PPP and they're not. So, so this is the one I want you to keep your eye on. If you know anyone, anyone in our state, that is a, a small business. I'm talking somebody that this individual is making less than $50,000 a year, or, you know, less than $70,000, $80,000 a year individually. Uh, they need to look into this. And now is the time to act, okay? So the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, this is a temporary federal program under the CARES Act that provides benefits to individuals who are not otherwise eligible for unemployment insurance. So let's talk about it really quickly. Next slide. Okay, so here's the requirements. You gotta either be unemployed or have your hours reduced to fewer than 32, and you must be earning less than the weekly amount of the unemployment you receive, all right? You can't be eligible for regular unemployment insurance, and there's a trick here to this. I'll explain this in a second. So for example, self-employed people don't typically pay the unemployment premiums, all right? So they're not eligible. Therefore, you are eligible under this, which is exactly the point. So, you know, you're a piano teacher, you're a masseuse, you're, you know, whatever your business is that you're doing and you're not, you know, you wouldn't typically be eligible. This part of the CARES Act made you to where you can apply through this layer to get unemployment. So that's what you're looking for. Uh, you have to be uneligible for unemployment insurance on the regular lane. This is the, the lane you can go through uh, if you're not uh, eligible on, under the other one, okay? Uh, you, 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 uh, you're able to work or able to accept work, except that the COVID-19 pandemic is preventing you from doing that. So basically, you've been having to stay home because you've been told by the governor that your business needs to be closed. And so again, you can't work. So this is exactly what we're talking about. You're going to have to prove, uh, provide acceptable form of proof of earnings. So let's talk about what that, uh, what that talks about. Let's go to my next slide. So acceptable proof of earnings are gonna take are gonna be like your 1040, your 1040A, 1040EZ. Uh, also, if you're like LLC, we're talking about the, the form K1, depending on how that. So these are acceptable forms according to the uh, uh, New Mexico Workforce uh, Solutions. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so there's this, this is a two-step process and that is why I'm emphasizing this today. And this is why it is so important that you hear this and you get the word out, okay? Two things have to occur because there's a federal rule that, that's unique and I can't tell you why, I can just tell you it is what it is. You, you, these people, you're gonna have to apply for regular unemployment insurance benefits. So you're gonna go to the, the uh, uh, Workforce Solutions and you're gonna apply for the unemployment benefits, okay? Now, because you're self-employed, you are probably gonna get declined and that's exactly the point, all right? Um, if you're determined and eligible, all right, then they clear you so you can apply for the PUA. 
but you can't apply for the PUA if you haven't already been turned down uh, as an uh, ineligible for un the unemployment. So you've got to apply to the regular lane, get turned down, then you're eligible to apply for the PUA. So that's why you need to go move now and not wait. You need to get on there and apply for the regular unemployment. Then when this la the, the lane opens and it's opening, I believe on Sunday, then you'll be able to apply for that lane, okay? So one, the step two is once they determine you're ineligible for the regular benefits, then they'll give you access to apply for the, the PUA through a link on the uh, unemployment insurance uh, uh, systems homepage. That becomes available on Sunday, April 26th. So starting Sunday, April 26th, my micro small businesses, my, my uh, independent contractors, my sole proprietors, my, my people that, you know, that work out of their home that uh, for whatever, that's when you can start applying for this pandemic uh, unemployment assistance. But you've got to, again, have to be turned down for the regular first. So don't wait until Sunday. Get started now if you're going to do this. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so again, this is what you'd go when you see the first page of the Workforce Solutions site. You can see right there in red where it gives you explanation of this. But uh, again, I'm encouraging you, don't wait. Get started on this now. Uh, I do have a training on this. I want to brag on my team. I called I called my associate state director, Adrian, Adrian Gallegos, and um, my uh, pro, uh, program uh, manager, Glenn Walters, and I said, I want a training on this pandemic unemployment assistance. And I told them that about two hours ago. And uh, so it's already up, uh, developed and ready to go. We're offering the first offering of this tomorrow at 9 a.m. So if you'd like to, you go to nmsbdc.org. That's nmsbdc.org. That'll be on my last slide. You can register for that training at 9 a.m. There's no cost. And then we'll walk you through all of the discussion about this uh, and applying for this pandemic unemployment assistance. Let's do next slide really quickly. I know we want to leave time for questions, so I'm going to go. All right, be careful of scams. We're already starting to see scams, uh, so just watch it. Make sure what you're replying to. Make sure what you're sending information out to. Just be extra cautious. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, I, I want all of my business owners to listen very carefully. It is so easy to worry about today and not worry about tomorrow, and, and or make a plan for today and not make a plan for tomorrow. I really want to encourage you, you, you really need to start thinking long term. Everyone's looking towards opening our businesses back up. That's just step one. That is just step one in this process. If you're expecting that the day we open things back up, that all of a sudden your sales are going to go right back to where they were the day you closed, you know business, business does not work that way. You started a business at one point and you walked through the time of having to build a customer base. You need to be prepared that some of that is going to occur again. You're going to have to be prepared to navigate some of those tough decisions and, and watch your cash. So especially in regards to sales and marketing, customer loyalty, when people buy things, they have buying habits. Those are likely to have been fragmented. That means for a cup for you know people buy things because they go eat at the same place every week or they get their hair cut at the same place. Those are buying habits. Okay. We've been closed long enough that buying habits are likely to have been fragmented. Okay. So that means people are not going to go back and, and shop exactly the way they shopped before. They're not going to buy at the same places that they bought before. So you need to be, and there may not be as many competitors. You need to be ready to move when things open back up. So you need to be how do you secure your existing customers? How do you reach out to those customers who came into your business uh, previously and make sure that you hold on to them and they don't shift their buying habits to another company? You need to make sure that you're attracting these new customers in the marketplace that are looking for a new place to, to get their car repaired because their other car repair shop is no longer in business, okay? So the other thing is you gotta listen to your customers because what they need, what they needed in the past may not be what they need now. So their needs may have shifted and changed. What was valuable to them about your business in the past may not. So in other words, you may have done everything about a handshake and a smile and friendliness. Cleanliness may now be a big issue. So it may be, you may need signs in your store about how you clean. You may need to make sure that your bathroom is cleaner than it has ever been before, because if it's not, people may not ever come back again. So you just gotta understand things will be different and you just start thinking about these things. Next slide.
All right, so you can get assistance from the New Mexico SBDC. There's a Women's Business Centers. There's the score, three score chapters in the state, and there's VBOC if you're a veteran. They're all available, available to assist you in the SBA district office. Ivan and his team can get you in contact with these uh, programs. Next slide. And so in summary, again, the SBDC, we're here to help you. If you want help with one-on-one -on -one counseling or you'd like to take the, the training or uh, find out more about the, uh, the trainings I told you, just go to nmsbdc.org. When you hit the front page, there's a link and you can register for counseling or training and we're here to help you. And we'll, we're gonna walk through this long-term with you over the next couple of years as we all get back to uh, making New Mexico a, a great place to, to uh, have a small business. And it already is, we're gonna make it better. All right, thank you very much. I'll, I'll hold for questions. Thanks, Russell. And to the audience, I did put the link to the SBDC's website in the chat box. So um, please, as Russell mentioned, go check out those trainings. They're fantastic and a really great resource. I'd like to introduce Gabriela Marquez uh, with DreamSpring. Gabriela? Hi. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so hi, my name is Gabriela Marquez. I am the market manager at DreamSpring. I have a very short presentation and I think the reason we were invited to be part of this panel is we are one of the lenders who is providing PPP loans during this time here in the state of New Mexico. We, I'll give a brief overview. So DreamSpring is a nonprofit organization. We've been operating in New Mexico for 26 years. Um, we do small business loans, we do startup businesses, we do SBA community advantage loans. And because of that, it was quickly, we quickly changed our processes so that we can offer PPP loans. And we have basically shifted all of our employees to focus on this 100% because we know the demand is very high. Um, and luckily we have funds and we are happy to take applications and we have a team that's working really hard and processing all of them really quickly so we can support small business owners here in New Mexico. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, it just has a tiny bit of information about DreamSpring. Um, like I said, we've been in New Mexico since 1994. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization that started here and we've expanded to other states. The headquarters are still in Albuquerque, New Mexico, even though we operate in Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Nevada, Georgia, and North Carolina. And then the next slide just has the website where we, uh, if someone is interested in applying for PPP, feel free to go to the website. There's also a 1-800 number there uh, where you can call. And if you'd like, I can also put my direct number in the chat and I'll be happy to take any questions about PPP and applications through that process. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Gabby. And um, just to mention, uh, Gabriela has been helping us uh, with some of these presentations and, and already did a webinar today in Spanish. So we really appreciate your help in getting the word out. I did no want to mention another CDFI that is, they're actually based in, um, in El Paso, but they are doing loans in New Mexico, a smaller amount than uh, DreamSpring, but they are available to do PPP loans. They are a CDFI and that is the Lift Fund. And um, here is uh, Lupe's contact, here's their uh, website, and uh, a little bit of app, uh, information about their application process. You can find that online. So really great CDFI organizations that we have here in New Mexico. So thank you again to the panelists. We're gonna go to questions. We did get your questions that you submitted when you registered. As well, you can type them in to the questions box. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we did have a question that I thought was, was a, a good one. Um, and this is for the panelists, uh, all of the panelists. What um, are the top three things a small business uh, should do as, as soon as this webinar is over? Um, Gabby, do you want to start? Sure. Um, well, if they're a small business owner and they have payroll or if they have a Schedule C because they're self-employed um, and you have not applied yet with PPP and not received funding, 
well, I would say if they have not received funding the first round, definitely apply with more than just one lender. As you may have heard, many banks have thousands of people in their queue, and it's really uncertain at this time who's going to be able to process the applications quicker. And the good thing about the SBA eTran system is you can only apply for one business entity for the PPP program. So a business owner, I would encourage them to apply to any organization that is taking PPP applications. That way you can increase your chances of having access to those funds. You might have heard, you know, the first uh, round of funding I think it ended in about two weeks. This one will probably be days or perhaps hours for funding to uh, end. So yes, number one, have access to PPP funds. Thanks. Great, Russell, you wanna add some insight? Um, well, tough question. Again, it depends on where, it depends on exactly where you're at as a business and where you're in. Uh, absolutely same agree. PPP, if you haven't applied, uh, find a lender, uh, get in there, um, uh, get your application in. Uh, we'll know more about the idol shortly, so I can't recommend that as a step because there's no way to apply at this moment, but but hopefully there will, there will be. Uh, get some training uh, at the nmsbdc.org, and I know that's the, or at West or at SCORE or at VBOC, get some training. Uh, navigating this is, is, navigating in this is gonna take some skills and, and you need to be prepared. So now is the time to, to put on your learning hat and, and learn learn about your finances, learn about how, how much money you're gonna have to have so that you're not, you know, when you go to a bank to borrow money, it shouldn't be like, well, I, I get, I'm gonna guess pick a number out of air. You should know, you should be have, have the understanding, you know what you're looking for and you know how much you're gonna need because you know how much you're gonna have in your bank account three months because you projected these things and, and all that can, you can learn. It's easy to learn. There's training available and the counselors can help you. Uh, and the other is again, uh, so the, the, I keep saying it, support each other and, and support your employees. Very stressful time. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're staying healthy, keeping your mental health in, in a good state. Great, thank you. Ivan or Shelly, did you have anything to add? Those are both really great points. I think uh, with our small businesses, if they have any questions on either of the loan programs, they can call us and we can help them work through it. Um, in addition to that, what we tell most of our small businesses when they call, because they, they're looking for all the different funding sources that are out there. And what we tell them is connect with with the Economic Development Department, with the governor's office, with the city that you're in, with their economic development, with the the mayor's office, connect with all of them, and and that way you're ahead of the curve if anything is released. For instance, a week ago they released some funds through the workforce training center that was directed to sole props and and you know those micro businesses and they had two thousand grants of seven hundred and fifty dollars within less than an hour it was all gone but if you're not connected to all these different resources that are trying to help all our small businesses you're going to miss out because just waiting for the news it's too late you need to be on the front lines with these entities and, and getting the information as soon as they put it out. So that's my suggestion. And I'll, I'll piggyback off what Gabriella said, applying with different lenders, uh, because a lot of times the pre-process when you're applying with the lender is in a paper app. And then the paper application goes into our electronic. Once it goes into our electronic, then we will earmark and reserve the funds for the lender. But a lot of people think, well, I applied with the lender, so they think it's a done deal but the lender didn't have time to put it in the system and the, and the funds were depleted. So I'll piggyback off what Gabriella said and check with several different lenders. Great, thank you. And, and I, I'm glad you brought that point up, uh, Ivan, about connecting with as many resources as you can. Um, I think that when businesses contact the Economic Development Department, I think that's something our department 
really excels at because we have a statewide network of resource partners and are tuned in to what uh, local governments are offering, what, what particular organizations or nonprofits are offering regionally. So feel free to use us as a, a, a bigger um, net to look at of, um, you know, a, a brainstorming uh, platform. Uh, feel free to call us and, and we can talk about other programs and, and tools outside of these federal programs. And I did, I want to point out too, I uploaded in the handout section a document that we created that we're calling Critical Steps. And um, th this is a good kind of roadmap to, to utilize, um, you know, first looking at federal programs and then walking down um, some of the other opportunities that are out there. So um, we got a question about nonprofits, and I think this is either SBDC or uh, SBA. Do you all want to clarify, are nonprofits um, eligible to apply? And there was the question that was raised. Um, there was a lot of, of debate around 501c6s not being eligible. Um, so, so does someone want to take that question and just uh, clarify that for folks? Okay, so our 5013Cs are eligible, and it was brought up in this new legislation that they wanted to also include the C6, which did not go through. So no changes to the eligibility on the PPP for the C6. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let's see, we got a question that is about um, Speaking about independent contractors, um, can uh, maybe Russell, you want to take this one? Um, can you speak to independent contractors and provide additional clarification for folks that are, are gig workers? Are they eligible for these programs? Absolutely. So independent contractors. So if you you know if you're paid by a 1099, etc., um, you're, you're eligible for PPP. You're eligible for idle, and you're all also eligible for unemployment, all three. So uh, depending on your particular lane and the size of your business, I, um, I believe there are many people in New Mexico that that need to be looking at the unemployment side for them because they don't want they a loan is not going to make a lot of sense for them in their particular situation and their uh, their expenses. So. Um, depending on the size of your business, but but yeah, independent contractors, sole proprietor, gig workers, you're eligible for any of those three. You're just gonna have you just want to look at them and make careful decisions as to which ones make sense for your specific situation. But if like again, like uh, let's say you're a you're a a, a, a tra you're one of those physical trainers, like you you people pay you to help them work out at the gym or whatever. You know what? You should probably looking be looking at the pandemic unemployment assistance because again, your bulk of your expense is just cut, you know surviving or floating through. Um, so just those all three are eligible. You're just going to have to look through them to figure out what makes sense for your particular situation based on your expenses of what what you've got to pay out the door every week. Okay, good advice. Here's a question from Kathleen. Um, and this is really getting at, this was hit on, um, but it, it um, could use some, some reiteration, but um, can someone provide a little bit of information about uh, notification? Um, many, many questions coming in about uh, folks have applied for the EIDL. Um, would they have received notification already if they applied weeks ago? Would they have received notification if they were denied? Um, many, many questions about this. So Russell or, or Ivan or Shelley. So the way the process works, once you applied, if you had a number, your application number that started with two, um, that system went out. So everybody that applied under the two number was sent an email and told, please apply under the new streamlined application process, which ended up being a four-page process without uploading of documentation. 
So when they applied for that second portion or the second time, it ended up being that streamlined time. There was an advance associated with it. And that advance was uh, up to $10,000. So one person equals $1,000. So if you have 10 employees, it was 10,000. If you have two, it was 2,000. So at that point, if you got a number that starts with three, that means you are in the queue. And yes, I understand that everybody's getting confused with there's no more funding and all of the different things that have been coming out. The people that are in the queue are still being processed. As soon as the funding got to a point where we could not accept any more applications, at that point, the site stopped taking applications, but the funding for the people that are in the queue are still getting processed. So the next steps, remember we're talking about about 5 million applications in this system with less than a few hundred people working on them, 5 million. So be patient, they're gonna get to you. And what will happen the first step will be that they will send you the advanced portion. So if you had three, three people, you're gonna get 3,000 into your bank account. If you have 12, you're gonna end up with 10,000. 10,000 is the max. So you're gonna get that. It's gonna go directly into your account, no emails until after it goes in. And then a few days later, once an, uh, loan officer gets to you, they're going to send you an email to invite you to the website again to log in to finish the loan portion of that application. Again, the, the timing is just the volume, the sheer volume of how many applications are being processed. We SBA actually brought on 2000 people to help field questions and, and do certain things, but you have to have a certain background to be able to process these loans. And we were able to get some people on board, but not enough to process the volume that we had. So currently, if you have a three, a number that starts with three, you, you got in. So they are processing them as we speak. Great. Is that Thank enough, you. Or, or, or do we yeah, clarify yeah, that's, that? that? That's good for right now. Um, thank okay. you for that. Um, I've, I've got a, a kind of a tough question, but we have heard this a lot at the, the state level. The question is from Jeremiah, and he is talking about, um, he's saying the current lender participants for the New Mexico uh, program um, say that they're only processing current members so um does anyone want to does anyone have any insight they want to provide in terms of guidance uh on what folks should do if if for some reason their bank isn't participating and they need to find a lender that um, is accepting new clients to apply for the ppp A tough question. Okay. So, um, oh, go this ahead. Is Shelley. This is Shelly, and I'll take that. Um, we just had a meeting with the credit unions this week, and the cre credit unions are regulated that they cannot um, take members that are not currently members of the credit union. So, the credit unions have stuck by that and are currently helping their own members, and unless that opens up, there are some lenders that if you don't have a relationship with them, maybe like the big box bank. They weren't doing them, but the majority of community lenders throughout the state, every single one of the community lenders are participating in this program. Great, thank you. Gabby, do you want to add anything from, from y'all's perspective? Sure. I mean, we've heard a lot of similar conversations. 
um, from small business owners that they're trying to go to their bank and either their bank won't call them back or they don't have access to them or they won't take uh, new clients perhaps because they don't have a, a business banking account or they ha don't have a commercial loan with them. Um, it's in some sense kind of the prerogative of different banks, how they want to process this. Uh, but if there is new, if there are small business owners who are looking for PPP funding access, then you can definitely contact DreamSpring. The information was in one of the slides or uh, like Joanna mentioned, also the Lyft Fund is also taking PPP applications. So there's at least two organizations in New Mexico that are taking any small business clients for PPP. Okay, great. And this is Russell. I wish there was an easy answer, but there's not. Yes, me too. And so, so my encouragement to everyone is, is again, because like what we said, you fill out a paper app. If you fill out a paper application with your lender on paper, then it's going to go into their their process. But once it gets uploaded or pushed to the SBA, then you're 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 hitting the queue when it hits the SBA. Where they'll hold or reserve the, the the you know the funding, but until you hit that queue, so there there's no physical way to know whether the lender on this side of the street has a hundred applications in their queue in on their desk, and the lender on the opposite side of the street only has fifty. So so there is that challenge. So like I said, my best advice to clients is is you need to explore opportunities. You need to um, you have as many conversations as you have, and again, you may need to look at applying at multiple um, uh, multiple situations. So, just um, I don't know if I want to add to that, but that's the best advice we can give you right now because there's there's no way to know where you are when when you're just on a paper application. Okay, great, thank you, Russell. And uh, we we got a few questions along those same lines about the state guarantee program too because for a bank to participate and i should say lender for a lender to participate in that program um they they need to be aware of the program and and acknowledge it they don't need to be enrolled we will work within any uh lending institution we do have a list of participating lenders on our website that are uh ready to go and eager to participate in the program um, and that's available and, and though all of those lenders that are listed are, are accepting new uh, customers and to participate in this program but i will say much of the focus in the lending environment is going toward accessing sba programs uh, we got a good question from kathy and it's in regard to the the eidl and and actually we've gotten a few questions along these same lines <clears throat> excuse me uh she applied for the eidl and it did and did not include herself as an employee she has one employee she received the thousand dollar advance but as many people have asked is there a way to revise the application and resubmit Our understanding is no, you can't revise that. So we'll move on to the second second phase of uh, receiving the funds and applying and getting the, the EIDL uh, number after that. Okay, thank you, Shelly. We're gonna take uh, oh, one more. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, but in addition to that, we're finding out that um, because there's, as, as Ivan said, five million applications, uh, we have people that are looking at them and if they didn't fill it out correctly, meaning that you have to have at least 90% ownership, well, we've had people that only listed themselves, so it's 50% ownership. Those are kind of put by the wayside. They could be denied right away or they could be follow up with extra information. So they may get a denial and then at that point, they would have to, um, uh, what is it called in there? Not, not resubmit, but, um, yeah, uh, what was it about? Then they have to like, dispute it. So they have to like, basically send in a, a dispute and correct it. But that seems to be a common error that um, we're, we're hearing on the EIDL is that they're not filling out the paperwork correctly and they're not listing 
the principles and as 90% or more ownership. So make sure your application is correct and fully filled out. Okay, and Russell, can you add uh, clarification too? Is, is SBDC available to help on those EIDL applications? Absolutely, we can help you walk. We uh, we can help you walk through it to analyze the questions. We also have the training that we offer live every day, so that you can go through the training, um, and we, we actually walk through the application and each question on the application. But again, to clarify, on the idol, as of today, right now, you can't apply for the idol because that portal is not open. Now they did add additional. They did add additional funding, and depending. You know, we do not know whether they will open it back up or not. It's quite possible, but uh, we're just keeping an eye on that um, to to see. So, so if it does open back up, yes, we, yeah, we can certainly help you walking through that process, or you can attend our training and walk through each line. Thank you. I have a question from Vernon. He is saying, um, how do I apply for the PPP if I have not filed 2019 taxes yet? Is this a requirement? Can I submit without attaching any filing documents? He can submit his 2018. Okay. All right, good to know. And um, let's take one more question. Um, I'm just looking through these really great questions. Um, a lot of them are very similar. Um, let's see. I do want to point out, David, I had a, a really good point that West uh, is available and ready with six women business centers around the state to support uh, women business owners and entrepreneurs. And you can find more information about their services at WESST.org. I will put their uh, information in the chat box, but they are, are fantastic and an SBA um, partner, resource partner too, I believe. Is that correct, Ivan and Shelley? Yeah, this is Russell, that is correct. They are, West is an SBA resource partner and they're exceptional. Especially if you're, okay. a woman, yeah. if you're a woman owned business, I, I strongly encourage you to reach out to West uh, to start working with them on your business. Okay. Um, so here's, here's the final question and, and thanks to all that have submitted questions. We'll do our best to follow up on these. Um, if you get the PPP and you are the only employee, will it be forgiven if I keep myself employed? And that's from Kendra. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And, and this is Russell. The only thing I will clarify, and this goes back to micro businesses, as bizarre as this sounds, Remember, there's that extra $600 payment on unemployment. So depending on your income that you make for your business, in theory, and again, this is just theoretical, you may make more money on unemployment than you do operating your business. So you just need to, to, to be aware, especially if you're at that lower level, if you're only making 25 to 30,000 a year, that $600 dollar uh, uh, per week payment is more it's like 32,000 a year so just be aware that if you're in that smaller income level unemployment may make more sense for you than PPP but, but I can I can't make that decisions I can't make those recommendations I just can tell you to investigate your opportunities because you can't do PPP for yourself and unemployment for yourself because uh, then you'd be uh, double dipping okay Okay, thanks, Russell. And and one more, um, we we have gotten many questions on this webinar as pre in and in previous ones. You touched on this in your presentation, Russell. But um, folks are asking about um, getting guidance on how can they, uh, what's the motivation for employees to return to work if they are making uh, more, collecting uninsurance. Um, 
so does that mean that we pay them when they are not working during the mandatory shutdown? So uh, many questions around this, this idea. Do you want to kind of reiterate um, some of the guidance that, that you all offer or are provided? This is a tough question. Again, this goes back to individual individual situation and and and, and taking that taking out taking out a PPP is a risk. It's a loan. It's a risk. Okay. If you don't follow the rules accurately, you could get yourself in trouble and have a portion of it that's not forgiven. Okay. So there's a balance here, and that means as a business owner, you have to weigh out the you have to weigh out the risk with the benefit of if you take out a PPP to keep your em employees employed. Now, if you have employees that are unemployment uh, on unemployment and they're making more money on unemployment than what you pay them, they again there's rules. They're supposed to be if there's employment, they're supposed to be going back to work, okay? But that that's, you know, as an employer that's not really something necessarily you have control over. So uh, that these are very tough decisions. These are very tough decisions and, and tough things to navigate. Um, understanding that if you take out a PPP and you can't keep that headcount up and that payroll level at the same rate, it could impact your ability to do that. So I, I want everyone to be please understand the PPP is. It's hard for me because I can't. All right. You have to ask the logic to yourself as a business owner. Does it, in my your particular situation for your particular employees, your particular, you know, where you're at, does it make more sense for your employees to go on unemployment? You go into survival mode for your business to clear this, get your sales back up, and then hire them back. Or are you in a situation to where you believe second things open up, you're going to be able to keep everybody super busy, and so you got to have them on staff so you're ready to move, and training new people would be very difficult. you got to weigh through those thoughts and make the decision, does it make sense for you to take a PPP and take that risk to keep your employees on, or is it actually better for your employees and your business long term to, to let them take unemployment? And you go into survival mode and then work on building your business back up so that the jobs are there for them when 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 you get sales back up. So every business situation is different and, and I wish it was a clear cut answer. All I can tell you is, is this is part of being an entrepreneur and, and you got to make those tough decisions and and, uh, but, and every situation is different. But you got to look at your industry and your business and an SBDC advisor can help you talk through some of this, your West advisors uh, and SCORE. But uh, don't don't just I don't think people should just be taking a PPP because it's available. I don't think people should be taking an idle just because it's available. Nor do I think people should just be doing unemployment because it's available. I think people should be thinking through what they're doing, weighing out the details of their business to make the best decision for them and their business situation uh, because there's risks with all of this. And you sh I think people should slow down and think through things. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great advice. Thank you, Russell. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Do any of the panelists have any additional closing thoughts that you want to add? Anything that you forgot to mention? I had a question for maybe Ivan or Russell, uh, who I don't know if you guys would know. I know that there is additional funding for IDLE. And as you were mentioning, you're not really sure if they're going to reopen the applications or if those funds are going to be used for the application submitted in the first round. Um, how, when or how are we going to know that information? It will be posted on our website. It will say funding available. And then if a no, notice comes out that um, they're taking applications for new idle applications, Either a notice will come out or always be on our website as well as the Treasury website. Okay, great, thank you. I concur that even the SBDC, that we would, we would get that information off of sba.gov uh, website. And and I would echo that too. Um, and and I, I'd like to encourage everyone that to get updates from the State Economic Development Department, I'll add that link to sign up for the email 
uh, email list, and we're putting out a weekly resource uh, wrap up, so you you would get that information from us too. So okay, I'd like to to extend a really big thank you to Ivan, Shelley, Russell, and Gabriella. Thank you so much for your time, your information. I'd also like to thank everyone that joined us today. Please hang in there, reach out to us, let us know how we can be of assistance. I will follow up and send the application or the uh, presentation out to everyone as well as the link to the recording. I'm going to go ahead and add some pertinent links, um, especially that training that Russell mentioned that's happening tomorrow at 9 o'clock to go over the pandemic unemployment assistance. Uh, that sounds like a fantastic way to spend your Saturday morning. Um, that being said, thanks again. You have our contact. We're in this together reach out, let's let's brainstorm and, and figure out how we can we can overcome all of these challenges. All right, thank you panelists. Thank you.